Hello everyone, it's Tori from Tori Story Creations, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to crochet this fluffy bee and how to create even and circular stripes. This bee is so soft and fun to carry around with, cuddle with, and also makes a great gift. I had so much fun creating this pattern and crocheting this bee. As you can see, I've developed a small bee buddy army over here, and I'm hoping that through this tutorial, you'll be able to learn how to crochet a bee and create your own bee buddy army as well. Now before we get started, I did want to mention that I know there are a lot of bee patterns out there, but in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to crochet a bee so that the stripes look more even and circular and less zigzaggy. For example, here's a bee that was crocheted using a traditional continuous spiral. We can see that because this is crocheted in a continuous spiral, when we change colors, we see a definite break in the middle of the row where we change colors from yellow to black and then from black back to yellow. This creates a sort of zigzaggy pattern every time we need to change colors. If we look at the bee on our right, this is crocheted following a different color changing technique that we'll be following in this tutorial. We can see that the rows are a little bit more even and less zigzaggy. The break between the yellow color and the black color are much less noticeable than the break in the spiral crocheted bee. If we turn both bees to their backsides, the difference is more apparent. We can see that the bee on the left that was crocheted using a continuous spiral has more of a spirally butt and black stripe that is not an even circle. Whereas if we look at the bee crocheted using the technique in this tutorial here on the right, we can see that the black stripe and the yellow bee butt are almost perfect circle shapes. So we're going to focus on this technique on the right when changing colors and creating our bee's stripes. I am really excited to share this tutorial with all of you, so let's get started. For this tutorial, you're going to need the following materials. A nine millimeter crochet hook, a yarn needle that's large enough to sew with the thick, chunky yarn, scissors, a hefty amount of fiber fill stuffing, a pair of 12 millimeter safety eyes. If you don't wanna use safety eyes, you can cut small circles out of black felt and glue them on with a hot glue gun. And a stitch marker. A stitch marker is optional, but I recommend using one so that you can keep track of the number of stitches in your rows. If you don't have a stitch marker on hand, you can just use a scrap piece of yarn. And lastly, you're going to need a fluffy, thick yarn. I'm using Sweet Snuggles yarn by Loops and Threads. I'll link this yarn in the video description below. If you want to make a bee using traditional bee colors, you're going to need yellow yarn for the body, black yarn for the stripes, and white yarn for the wings. You'll see in this tutorial that I'm going to use this light pink yarn instead of the black yarn because it shows up a little bit better on camera. First, we're going to crochet the bee's body. Once we finish crocheting the body of our bee, it should look like this. We're going to start with the yarn that we're going to use for our main body. In this case, I'm using yellow yarn. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six single crochets inside. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches around. So to get started, I'm going to grab the tail end of my yarn going to leave quite a lot there and I'm going to hold my working yarn so the yarn that's attached to my yarn ball with my thumb then I'm going to wrap the tail end of my yarn around all of my fingers twice so you have one two and I'm going to hold the excess yarn tail between my pinky and ring fingers to secure it. Once you finish this step, you should see your yarn tail, two loops around your fingers, and then you should be holding your working yarn with your thumb. 
So next I'm going to grab my crochet hook and I'm going to insert the hook underneath the first two loops around my fingers and then I'm going to hook onto my working yarn and I'll pull that working yarn underneath both of the loops that were on my fingers. Once I've completed this step, I should have one loop around my hook. Next, I'm going to reach over with my hook and hook onto my working yarn one more time. And I'm going to pull that working yarn through the loop that was on my hook. After doing so, I should still have just one loop around my hook. So now I'm going to carefully grab the part where all of my loops meet I'm going to slide it off of my fingers. At this point, you should have your yarn tail, your two loops that form a circle, one loop around your hook, and then your working yarn. So next we're going to start crocheting our six single crochets in our circle. With this chunky yarn, it can sometimes be difficult to tighten the circle, so make sure that when you're creating your single crochets, you're creating them looser than you might usually. So to create our single crochets, we're going to insert our hook inside of the circle, we'll yarn over with our working yarn, we'll pull that back up through the circle, and we should have two loops around our hook. Then we're going to yarn over with our working yarn, and pull that through both of the loops that were on our hook. This created our first single crochet in our circle, and it's this little V. So now we'll continue crocheting five more single crochets in our circle. So again, we'll insert our hook inside the circle, we'll yarn over with our working yarn, we'll bring that back up through the circle, we should have two loops around our hook, and then we're going to yarn over with our working yarn, and we'll pull that through both loops around our hook. So we'll insert our hook in the circle, yarn over with our working yarn, pull that back up through the circle, we'll have two loops on our hook, we'll yarn over, and pull three. So we have three single crochets. I'll continue doing that until I have a total of six. So once you have a total of six single crochets in your circle, it's time to tighten up the circle. So to do this, we're going to take our yarn tail and we're going to pull this down towards you until you see one of these two loops start to close. So we're going to do this very gently because this yarn is pretty fragile. So right away I can see that this loop right here, after pulling a little bit, is much smaller than the other one. So this one is the one that started to close. So before it's fully closed, we're going to grab the loop and we're going to pull that down towards you and that will tighten up this other loop. So very carefully we'll pull that. And we can see that that tightened one of our loops. So now we have this very big loop right here. So to tighten that up we're going to grab our yarn tail and we're going to pull that down towards ourselves, towards our body. Try to be gentle but it might need a big tug. Okay, so now we've tightened both loops of our circle. So once you've tightened both loops of your circle, your circle should look like this. The last step for creating our magic circle is to create a slip stitch that connects the last stitch of our row to the first stitch of our row. So we'll take our hook and we'll insert it in the first stitch of our row. We'll yarn over with our working yarn. Make sure this is your working yarn and not your yarn tail. So we'll yarn over with our working yarn and pull that through the first stitch and also the loop that was on our hook. And now we've completed our magic circle. We should have a total of six stitches around. So now I'm going to grab my stitch marker and insert it in the last stitch of my row so that it helps me keep count. 
You'll notice that our magic circle is a perfect circular shape. To keep the stripes of our bee also a perfect circular shape and avoid the zigzag when we eventually change our yarn color, we're going to create separate even rows instead of crocheting in a spiral or continuous round. To do this, we're going to start every row from here on out with a chain one. This will create the height of our row so that all of our stitches for that row are on the same level. From there, we'll make our usual stitches all the way around our row. Then to finish off the circle, we're going to slip stitch to join the last stitch of our row to the first single crochet stitch of our row. We are not going to slip stitch into the chain. We're going to skip that because the chain was just used to create the height of our row and doesn't count as an actual stitch. So let's start crocheting row two and try this out. For row two, we're going to start by chaining one. Then we're going to increase in each stitch around our circle. So a total of six times. And to finish off this row, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. Once we've finished row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So we'll start with our chain one. We're going to yarn over with our working yarn and pull that through the loop on our hook. That completes our chain. And remember, this chain is used to create the height of our row. Next, we're going to increase in each stitch around our circle for a total of six increases. An increase is just creating two single crochets in one stitch. So to do that, I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch. I'll yarn over with my working yarn. I'll pull that up through my stitch and I should have two loops around my hook. Then I'll yarn over again, and I'll pull this through both loops on my hook. And that's our first single crochet of our increase. So to complete our increase, we're going to insert our hook back in that same stitch. We'll yarn over, we'll pull that up through the stitch, and we should have two loops around our hook and we'll yarn over again, and we'll pull that through both loops on our hook. And that concludes our first increase. So now we'll increase in the second stitch. So I'll insert my hook in that stitch. I'll yarn over, I'll pull it back up through the stitch. I'll have two loops around my hook, yarn over and pull through both of those loops. So that's our first single crochet of the increase. So I'm going to insert my hook back into that same stitch. I'll yarn over. I'll pull that back up through the stitch. I'll have two loops around my hook. Yarn over and pull through. So that is my second increase and I'm going to continue increasing in the next four stitches. So now I've finished increasing in all six stitches of my row. Next we'll create a slip stitch to connect the last stitch of our row to the first stitch of our row and connect the circle together. So if you'll notice there's a slight dip in the circle right here and that's because this right here is our chain. Sometimes it can be a bit difficult to find the chain because remember we want to skip the chain when we slip stitch. So one tip that I like to do is count backwards from my last stitch to identify what our first stitch is. For example, we know this row is a total of 12 stitches, so we can count 12 stitches around. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we know that this is the first single crochet stitch of our row. So that's the one that we want to slip stitch into. So we're going to insert our hook into that stitch. We'll yarn over and we'll pull that through the stitch and also the loop that was on our hook. Now we've completed row two and we should have a total of 12 stitches around. And we can see that this created a perfect circle. For row three, we're going to chain one. Then we're going to follow the pattern of single crocheting and then increasing for a total of six times. Once we've completed that, we'll slip stitch into the first stitch of our row to connect the circle. Once we've completed row three, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. So we'll start off with our chain one. So we'll yarn over, pull through. So there's our chain one. And now we're going to single crochet in the first stitch. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull that up through my stitch. I should have two loops on my hook. I'll yarn over and then I'll pull through both of those loops. So that is our first single crochet. And next we're going to increase. So that is two single crochets in this stitch. So I'll insert my hook into the stitch. I'll yarn over. I'll pull that back up through the stitch. I'll have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over again and I'll pull through. Then I'll insert my hook back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull back up through the stitch. I'll have two loops around my hook. I'll yarn over once more and I'll pull through both those loops. And that's my increase. So then we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around our circle. So that's our single crochet. And now we're going to increase. Then single crochet. We'll remove our stitch marker. And we'll increase in our last stitch of our row. Next, we'll slip stitch into the first stitch of our row. So again, we can count 18 stitches back to see where our first row is. So this is my 18th stitch. So this is the first stitch we created of our row. And this is our chain. So we'll skip the chain and we'll slip stitch into this first stitch. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over and pull through the stitch and what was on my hook. So now we've completed row three and we should have a total of 18 stitches around. For row four, we're going to chain one. Then we're going to repeat the pattern of single crochet, single crochet, increase for a total of six times. Once we've completed that, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. Once row four is completed, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So we'll start with our chain one, and then we will repeat the pattern of single crochet, single crochet, increase. So we'll single crochet in the first stitch, then I'll single crochet in the second stitch, and then I'm going to increase so two single crochets in one stitch in this next stitch. So I'll repeat that pattern. So we'll do a single crochet, single crochet, increase. Single crochet, single crochet, increase.
So next, we'll slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. So this is my chain, so we'll skip that and we'll slip stitch into the first stitch. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull through the stitch and the loop that was on my hook. So once you've completed row four, you should have a total of 24 stitches around. For rows five and six, we're going to chain one, then we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our circle. To finish off this row, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. Once we've finished each row, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So we'll chain one by yarning over and pulling that through the loop of our hook, and we will single crochet in each stitch around our circle. So that should be a total of 24 times. And again, a single crochet is inserting our hook into our stitch, yarn over, pull our hook back up through the stitch. We should have two loops. We'll yarn over and we'll pull through. And that's our single crochet. So we'll continue doing this all the way around our circle. So now we'll finish off this row by slip stitching into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. So this is our chain, so we'll skip that and we'll insert our hook into the first stitch of the row. We'll yarn over and we'll pull through both the stitch and our loop on our hook. We'll repeat the same row for row six. Chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. To finish off our row, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch to connect the circle. So we'll skip our chain and we will slip stitch into the first stitch. Once you've completed row six, you should have a total of 24 stitches around and your B body should start to look like this. So we've actually just created the B head. Once we finish row six, we're going to start switching colors so that we can create these stripes of our B. But before we do that, I'm going to trim off some of this yarn tail so that it doesn't get tangled with all of the yarn that we're going to be working with. So I'll take my scissors and I'll just trim that off so that it is shorter and it's just inside of our bee's head. Now it's time to switch to the yarn color that you're going to use for your bee's stripes. I'm going to be using pink. So we're going to use this pink yarn to crochet the next two rows, rows seven and eight. So for rows seven and eight, we're going to chain one, then we're going to single crochet in each stitch around our circle, so 24 times. And once we've completed that, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. Once we've finished each row, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So in order to start crocheting with pink, we're going to leave our yellow working yarn as is, making sure that we tug it a bit so that it is tight around our hook. Then we're going to take our stripe yarn and we're going to create a little loop with it and we will hook it on to our hook. Then we will pull that through the loop that was on our hook. You're going to make sure you have a little tail here. You'll hold this down and that creates our first chain. So now we're going to single crochet in each stitch around and then we'll follow that up with a slip stitch.
So now I have finished single crocheting for my row and I'm going to slip stitch to connect the circle. So this was our chain and we'll insert our hook in the first stitch, yarn over and pull through all of our loops. And this completes row seven and it is also the first color change row that we have. So now we'll continue crocheting row eight. So now that I've finished my single crochets, I will slip stitch to connect the circle. So we'll skip our chain and then we will slip stitch into our first stitch. Once you've completed row 8, you should have a total of 24 stitches around. And we've finished our first stripe of our B. So before we continue, we're going to pause for a moment to secure this loose yarn tail from the starting piece of yarn when we changed colors to create our stripe. So to do this, we're going to grab our yarn needle and we will thread our yarn. And then we're just going to create a small knot and that will just make sure that the yarn doesn't unravel in the bee and it stays pretty secure. So we'll tie a knot. It doesn't have to be pretty, just has to do the job. So now we can continue crocheting. For the next two rows, rows 9 and 10, we're going to swap to our yellow yarn. We'll chain one, single crochet 24 times, so all the way around our circle. And then we'll slip stitch to join the last stitch of our row with the first stitch of our row to connect the circle. Once we've completed each of these rows, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So to change colors to yellow, we're going to grab our working yellow yarn that's still attached to our B. And we're going to yarn over with our hook and we'll create our first chain. We'll take our working pink yarn and we'll just set it aside and ignore that for now because we'll be using that again later. So now we can continue crocheting this row and single crocheting around. So now that we've reached the end of our row, we're going to skip our chain and we'll slip stitch into the first stitch of our row. And then we'll continue through row 10. We'll skip our chain and we'll insert our hook into our first stitch and slip stitch. So once you've completed row 10, you should have a total of 24 stitches around and your B should look like this. Now it's time to swap back to our pink yarn. So I'm going to take my yellow yarn and set it aside. I'm going to pull my pink yarn up and we're going to work with our pink yarn. So for rows 11 and 12, two rows, we're going to chain one, then we're going to single crochet in all 24 stitches around, and we'll finish off our row with a slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. Once we've finished these rows, we should have a total of 24 stitches around. So I will yarn over with my pink yarn, and I'll pull that through to create our chain, and then I'll start single crocheting and finish this off with our slip stitch.
So I'll skip this chain, so I'll slip stitch, and I'll continue for row 12. I'll skip my chain and then I will slip stitch into the first stitch. Once you've completed row 12, you should have a total of 24 stitches around. We're going to pause here and attach our 12 millimeter safety eyes. If you don't have safety eyes or are going to use felt for your eyes, you can skip this step and continue crocheting. So to attach our safety eyes, I'm going to first find the bottom side of my V and then I'm going to turn my V towards me. So then we'll put the safety eyes on either side with the bottom down here. So we're going to grab our eyes. I like to place my safety eyes between rows three and four on my bee's face. So you can count one, two, three, four. And we're going to want to place our safety eye somewhere here. So I'll place mine here. And then I'm going to place my other eye almost directly across the bee's face also in between rows three and four. So I think that this might be a good spot. So once you're happy with where the eyes are placed, you're going to secure your safety eyes using the backings. So now we've secured our safety eyes on, and if you notice that it's a little bit fuzzier than you want around the safety eye, you can take some scissors and trim a little bit of the fuzz away. Just be careful not to cut a strand of yarn itself. So now it's time to continue crocheting. We're going to switch to our yellow yarn again to crochet the next two rows. For rows 13 and 14, we're going to chain one, then we'll single crochet in each stitch around and we'll finish off the row by slip stitching into the first stitch to connect the circle. So we'll chain one with our working yellow yarn and then we're going to continue with our single crochets for this row. Once we've finished our 24 single crochets, we'll skip our chain and then we will slip stitch into the first stitch of our row. We'll continue crocheting row 14 with yellow yarn. So we'll chain one and we'll single crochet 24 times. Then we're going to skip our chain and we'll slip stitch into the first stitch of our row to connect the circle. Once you've completed row 14, your bee should look like this. Now we finish crocheting the body length of our bee and we're going to start decreasing to close up our bee. For the next two rows, we're going to use our pink yarn to create our last stripe. So we'll set aside our yellow yarn. We're going to grab our stripe color yarn. For row 15, we're going to chain one, and then we're going to repeat the pattern of one single crochet, one single crochet, decrease a total of six times until we've reached the end of our row. Once we've finished that pattern, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of our row to connect the circle. Once we finish row 15, we should have a total of 18 stitches around. So we're going to yarn over and pull through to create our chain for the round. And then we'll single crochet in the first stitch. We'll single crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to decrease. 
So a decrease is single crocheting two stitches together. So to do that, you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch. You'll yarn over and you'll pull that through the stitch. So you should have two loops on your hook. And then you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Then you should have three loops around your hook. So you can see that we have two stitches right here. We're going to yarn over and pull our yarn through all of the loops on our hook. And that crocheted both of those two stitches into one, so it decreased. So we'll repeat this pattern, we'll single crochet, single crochet, and then decrease. So we'll insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, and pull that through all of our loops. So we'll continue this pattern of one single crochet, one single crochet, and then decrease. And once we've finished with our last decrease, we're going to slip stitch into the first row to connect our circle. So we'll skip our chain and then we'll slip stitch into this first stitch. So once you've finished row 15, you should have a total of 18 stitches around. Now we're going to pause here and we're going to get out our fiber fill stuffing to start stuffing our bee's body. So once you've stuffed your bee the majority of the way and you're happy with how round your bee is, we're going to crochet the next row. We'll be able to add a little bit more stuffing before we close up our bee. So for row 16, we're going to continue using our pink yarn or whatever yarn you're using for your stripes. And we're going to chain one and then we're going to single crochet once and then decrease. We'll repeat that pattern for a total of six times until we've reached the end of our row. Then we'll finish our row off by slip stitching into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. Once we've completed row 16, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So I will yarn over and pull through to create my chain. And then I'm going to alternate between single crocheting and decreasing. So we'll single crochet in the first stitch and then we will decrease next. So remember a decrease is when we single crochet two stitches together. So we'll insert our hook, yarn over and pull through, and then we'll insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then we'll yarn over again and we'll pull that through all three loops on our hook. So then we'll single crochet and then we'll decrease Then we'll finish this row off by slip stitching into the first stitch of our row. So we'll skip our chain and we will slip stitch. So once you've finished row 16, you should have a total of 12 stitches around. For row 17, we're going to chain one and then we're going to decrease all the way around our row. Once we've reached the end of our row, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of our row to connect the circle. Once row 17 is complete, we should have a total of six stitches around. We're going to swap to our yellow yarn. So we'll yarn over with our yellow yarn 
and pull through the loop on our hook to create our chain one. Then we're going to decrease. So we'll crochet two stitches together. and continue decreasing around our circle. Once I've done about three decreases, I'm going to pause for a second. We can see that our hole is getting much smaller, so at this point, I'm going to trim my pink yarn that I was using for my stripes. So I'll grab my scissors and I will trim this yarn, leaving a tail so that we can secure it. So I'll get out my yarn needle and I will thread the needle. And then I'm going to just make a little knot with this yarn around the inside of my bee. Loop and I'll pull through and do that just one more time to create a knot. And then I can trim this tail and stuff the tail back in my bee. At this point, you can also stuff your bee a little bit more. So now I can keep crocheting. So I'm going to continue decreasing for this row. And once I finish crocheting all of my decreases, I'll skip my chain and I'll slip stitch into the first stitch of our row. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over, and pull through. Now we're just left with a small hole. So I'm going to trim my yarn so that I have a large enough tail to sew my hole closed. And I'm going to take my tail and I'm just going to yank on this loop to pull that through. And now is your very last chance to add any last minute stuffing to your bee. I think mine is looking pretty good now. So next I'm going to grab my yarn needle and I'm going to thread my needle with this yarn tail. And we're going to sew this closed. So to sew the hole closed, I'm going to insert my yarn needle underneath the front loop of the first stitch. And I'm going to go towards the hole. I'll pull that through. And then I will insert my hook back out of the front loop of the next stitch. And the front loop, you know how there is this little V here for a stitch? Is just the top loop of the V. So I'll insert my needle in this loop, pull through, and then I will do the same. I'll go back and forth for all six of the stitches. And now comes the most satisfying part. You can tug on this piece of yarn and it will close the hole shut. So now you can see that my hole is closed shut and we're going to create a knot to secure this yarn tail. So I usually like to insert my yarn tail somewhere 
just to get it out of the way. And then I'm just going to hook on to any little yellow stitch here. And I'll pull my yarn needle through. And then I'll go back into that little stitch again. And I will pull that through. But this time when I have my loop, I'll insert my yarn needle through that loop and this will create a knot. And then I'll take my needle again and I'll insert it through the body. So I'll pull that up. So then I will pull my yarn and trim it. So now we finished crocheting our bee's body and look how cute and round our little bee bum is. Now it's time to crochet our bee's wings. This is what a finished wing looks like. You're going to want to make two of these. For row one, we're going to create a magic circle with six single crochets inside. Once we've completed row one, we should have a total of six stitches around. So to get started, I'm going to grab the tail end of my yarn and I'm going to hold my working yarn the yarn that's attached to my yarn ball with my thumb against my palm. Then I'm going to take my yarn tail and I'm going to wrap it around all four of my fingers two times. We have one, two, and I'm going to hold it in place by sticking the yarn in between my pinky and my ring finger. If you followed my tutorials before, when I'm using much thinner yarn, I actually wrap the yarn tail around just my pointer and middle finger. Here I'm wrapping it around all four of my fingers because the yarn is so thick and chunky. I want to give myself enough room to create all six single crochets in the circle and also have enough room to tighten the circle. So that's why I wrap the yarn around all four of my fingers so that it will create a larger circle. So once you've gotten this far, you should have your two loops around your fingers, your working yarn closest to your palm, and then your yarn tail. So now we're going to insert our hook underneath the first two loops around our fingers. Then we're going to hook on to our working yarn and pull that underneath both of the loops on our fingers. Once we finish this step, we should have one loop around our hook. Next, we're going to reach over our yarn and hook onto our working yarn. And then we're going to pull that through the loop that was on our hook. So once we finish this step, we should still have one loop on our hook. Now I'm going to carefully grab all the yarn that's around my fingers and slide it off. So I'm going to grab it right here where all of these loops are. And then I'm going to very carefully take this working yarn and tug at it just so slightly, just to tighten it a little bit. Once you've completed this step, you should have one loop around your hook, your working yarn, your yarn tail, and then two loops that form our circle. For the next steps, I'm going to start crocheting single crochet stitches inside of the circle. When we're using such thick yarn, we're going to want to crochet our single crochets very loose. That will make it much easier to tighten up our circle in the end. So I'm going to take my hook, I'll insert it inside the circle, I'll yarn over, with our working yarn and then I'm going to pull that hook back up through the circle. I should have two loops around my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over with my working yarn and then I'm going to pull that through both loops on my hook. And we can see this little V stitch is one single crochet. So now I'm going to continue single crocheting until I have a total of six single crochets in my circle. So I'm going to insert my hook inside of the circle. I'll yarn over. I'll pull that back up through the circle. I should have two loops around my hook at this point. Then I'm going to yarn over again, 
and pull my hook through both loops that were on my hook. So that's my second single crochet. Three, four, five, six. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So once you have all six single crochets, it's time to tighten the circle. So to do that, we're going to have to be very careful because this yarn is a little bit difficult to work with when we're creating magic circles. So we're going to grab our yarn tail and we're going to very gently pull the yarn tail down towards you until you see one of these two loops start to move. So I'll try to pull it very gently. I think I can see that this loop got a little bit smaller. So then I'm going to grab that loop and I'm going to pull it down towards me and that will close up the larger loop. So you might need to pull it out a little bit to get it a little bit bigger so that you can pull it down towards you. Once you pull it down, the other loop will tighten. So now we can grab our yarn tail again and if we also pull this one, try to be gentle. If you pull it, then that will close up the other loop. So once you've finished tightening the loops, your magic circle should look like this. We have our first stitch, our second, our third, our fourth, our fifth, and our sixth. So the next step is to create a slip stitch to join our last stitch and our first stitch together and close up this circle. So you're going to grab your working yarn and hold it. Then you're going to insert your hook underneath the first stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull that through the stitch, but you're also going to pull it through the loop that was on your hook. And that's our slip stitch. So now we've completed row one, creating our magic circle, and we should have a total of six stitches around. So now I will place my stitch marker at the last stitch of this row, and we can move on to row two. For row two, we're going to chain one, then create two half double crochets in each stitch around our circle. Once we've completed that, We'll slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to connect the circle. After we've completed row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So to get started, we're going to chain one, and we'll do that by yarning over. You're just going to pull that through the loop that was on your hook. So this is one chain. Next, we're going to create two half double crochets in each stitch around our circle. So to create a half double crochet, you're going to first yarn over so that you have two loops around your hook, and then you're going to insert your hook in your stitch. You'll yarn over again and pull that back up through your stitch. Once you've completed that, you should have three loops around your hook. You'll yarn over again, and then you're going to pull that through all three loops on your hook. So that's our first half double crochet. So we'll create one more half double crochet in this same stitch. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, we'll yarn over again, pull that back up through the stitch, and we should have three loops around our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops that were on our hook. And that is our second half double crochet in our first stitch. So we'll continue going around creating two half double crochets in each stitch. So we yarn over, we'll insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through. So 
we'll repeat that in the same stitch. So once we finish creating two half double crochets in each stitch around, we're going to slip stitch in the first stitch of our row to connect a circle. To do this, we're going to identify our first stitch. So I'm going to start counting from the last stitch until I get to 12. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we know our row should have a total of 12 stitches. So that means that this right here was our chain. So we're not going to count our chain and we're going to instead insert our hook into the first stitch. We'll yarn over and we'll pull through that stitch, but also the loop that was on our hook. So now that we've completed row two, we should have a total of 12 stitches around. So now we're going to cut our yarn, leaving a large enough tail so that you can sew this onto your bee's body. And then we'll just pull this yarn through, and then you'll be using this end to sew the wing to your bee. So now it's time to sew the pieces of our bee together. So before we get started, let's trim off the yarn tails on our wings. We're going to keep the yarn tail at the outer edge of our wing, but we're going to flip our wing over to the back side and we're going to trim this one off. Now to do that, thread our yarn needle and then we're going to insert our hook underneath a few stitches. And then we can trim this yarn tail off. And I just like to trim it this way just to make sure that it is super secure and the wing will not unravel. So you're going to also want to trim the yarn tail on the back side of the other wing. So next we're going to take our bee and we're going to find the ideal placement for our wings. So if you're looking at the bee head on, you're going to want to put the wings on the very top side of the bee. I personally like to put my wing in between the first and the third stripe. So right on top of this second stripe. And I like to place them about one stitch apart. So if we grab our bee and we hold it upright, we can see that this would be around the place where I would want the wings. So for the wings, I just like to hold them in place with my hand while I sew. And I also don't sew this top edge to the bee, but I sew this bottom edge to the bee. And that way the wing will sit nice and gently on top of the bee and create a kind of little dome round wing. So you'll start off by threading your needle. And then I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to insert it underneath one of these stitches just so that I can come out on the back side. So I'm closer to the edge that I want to sew to my bee. So now I'm going to start sewing the wing onto my bee's body. So I will hold the wing in the position where I want to sew it. I'll double check really quick that this is it. And we'll try to center the wings between the eyes. So I think this is a good location. Holding my wing in place, I'm going to insert my hook underneath one of these stitches. 
and pull that out. And then keeping hold of my wing, I'm going to grab some stitches on the bottom edge of this wing. And I'll just come out the other side and I'll pull my yarn. And then I'm going to insert my hook underneath another stitch, grab a hold of that stitch and pull through. So I'm just going back and forth trying to connect and sew this wing nice and flat on top of the bee. So next I'm going to hook onto the wing. And we can see right here that we had hooked onto the body and now we're hooking onto the wing so this will join those two seams together and create a secured wing. So once we're happy with how our wing is sewn on, I'm going to look at the underside of this wing and just add a little bit more stitching to secure this together. So I'll insert my hook underneath some stitches of the body and then I'm going to go back and insert my hook underneath some stitches of the wing and then I'll go back in the body and I'll do the same for this other side. And that way both sides of my B are nice and secured and it looks nice and evenly sewn. Insert my hook under the stitch and I'll try to come back up through the body. And I'm pretty happy with how this is sewn on. You can see that it is mostly centered within the bee's face, leaving just a small gap, and that it is still a nice circular shape that kind of just rests on top of my bee. So I'm going to tie a knot to fasten this off. So I'll just hook onto a piece of my wing once, and then I'll go back in again into that same spot to create a loop. And then I'll take my yarn needle, insert it through that loop, and pull to create a knot. And then I'll weave some of this tail into the wing and give it a trim. So now we finish sewing our first wing onto our bee. So you're going to follow this same strategy to sew the second wing onto your bee, just one or two stitches apart from each other. Once you've finished sewing both wings onto your bee, your bee should look like this. And congratulations, you've finished crocheting your fluffy bee. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tutorials from me, please subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comments section below what tutorials you'd like to see from me next. Thank you and have a beautiful day!